Dropping the Needle. You're listening to Dropping the Needle, the podcast where all music from all genres is discussed. New releases, classic albums, rediscovered music, signed and unsigned. No ass kissing. Just two guys talking about music. Here are your hosts, Michael Brandbold from Michael Brandbold Marketing and Mitch LaFont. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Dropping the Needle, the podcast that uh, has been described as if Beavis and Butt had ever did a podcast, this would be it. And I'm such, I'm so proud of that description. <laughs> um, I'm one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandvold from Michael Brandvold Marketing, and uh, joining me from Canada. Actually, we've got two two people that are from Canada. With us, right. you're not. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm originally from Minnesota. That kind of counts, right? Close enough. You <laughs> Close got the enough. accent going. You can't get any closer to Canada without crossing the border. Um, I'm joined by Mitch LaFon from PureGrainAudio.com. And Mitch, why don't you do the introductions to our special guest today? Absolutely. We have a, a Canadian icon with us today. Uh, long, long career. Uh, Miss Sass Jordan is joining us today. Hey. Welcome, One- Sass. Thank you so much for joining us. This is very cool. About her... Her new, a lot of exciting stuff coming up with Brian Tishy and, and Jakey Lee, formerly of Ozzy's band. But so, uh, first, what, we're what just going to get into a discussion this week, about or these days. Uh, well, this week, no, it's it's always different. But it, there's a lot of Stefan Duras, is, who is this kind of Latin instrumental guitar type artist, uh, like flamenco-y kind of stuff. I've been listening to Jean Lelou. And, um, oh, of course, now I can't think of his name. That amazing, that's, he's Spanish. Anyways, I'll think of it and I'll tell you later. Uh, I was listening to Greg Allman this morning. And I listened to crazy weird stuff. Like, like um, uh, Jonathan Goldman, which is healing type of music. I don't know if you've ever heard it. Like the, the ultimate ohm. <laughs> Yeah, well, I saw you tweeted that this morning. You tweeted an ohm. Ohm. <laughs> ohm. Yeah, you saw that. I know. It is. Yes, uh, people actually see your tweets. <laughs> it's mostly eclectic stuff. You're not. You're not listening to sort of you know, uh, One Direction or Justin Bieber or Rihanna. You're you're staying away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what everybody listens to in the morning? Your kids. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I listen to a lot of um, Cuban music as well. Um, I like la- like salsa, merengue, mambo. That's the stuff that makes wakes me up in the morning, and because I always feel like I'm on a you know a tropical island when I'm doing that, and that, that makes me happy. So, I listen to stuff that makes me happy, um, and I listen to a lot of music. So, I, so that's just a tiny, tiny bit. But I mean, I listen to Sun. <laughs> Right, good old Sunday. Program, believe it or not, which is astounding because normally, nah, you know. So, so Mitch, yeah, do we even have to ask what you've been listening to this week? I know, I know, I know. Why? Yeah. I was, I was gonna say you get three guesses, and the first two don't count. <laughs> it's not been it's... all kiss this week. In okay, fact, it's been it's... Metallica. No, in fact, it's been Buck Cherry this week. But, a little different. Okay. All right. Well, they've got one brand new single, which I just listened to. It's pretty good. Right. And I, and I went through the uh, the discography to pick out the uh, the fifty greatest, and uh, you know, back into a little more Alice Cooper, and um, a lot of singles, a lot of just one songs coming in and out. Uh, some Great White. Um, you know, Great White has remixed their latest album for release next year, and I got an advance, and so I've been previewing some new music. That, I've, I've been I've been listening to that a lot this week. The new album, Elation, remixed, sounds dramatically different and better than the initial mix. Um, yes. Really good. I've been listening to the new Prince single, right? Which I sent you, Rock and Roll Love Affair. He's got a brand new song that he just released, <laughs> and uh, I like it because it sounds like Purple Rain era Prince. It's not wacky, weird, strange Prince. It's Prince being kind of that rock person that he's always 
kind of been. Um, yeah. I like it a lot. You know, it. I I actually I bought it. I had wow. to wait a week for it to be made available to buy because they just released it as a YouTube video first. And uh, he's got a full album coming out soon. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. If the rest of the album sounds like this, this could be some exciting Prince music finally. Oh, uh, I just remembered the name of the guy. It was Manu Chao. Manu Chao, that's his name. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you guys it seems know what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, well, I know Jean Lelou, even though it's not 1990 anymore, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, love kiss. <laughs> <laughs> now, since we discussed the kiss, you have to admit they are brilliant. By the way, I don't yeah. give a crap what year it is. I really don't, because most of the year I don't remember anyway. The only reason I remembered this year was because it was 2012, which is a big deal, a big hairy ass deal, might I say. But other than that, who gives a flying you know what? I don't. Music is just uh, it. It it need it's timeless, except for production. That's where you get like, I got to stop the movements. That's where you get problems. Like you can tell if it's eighties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If, if if somebody's cutting corners on production, you you can pick that up right away. But other than that, I don't care. I'm just like you. I don't care what year it is when it was released. Nope. If it sounds good and I like it and it makes me happy and feel good, That's right. it does. It doesn't matter if it's a fifty year old song that I'm hearing for the first I time. I agree. I agree. Now, one of the questions that we always talk about is the uh, the first album you brought home and fell in love with. Uh, what would that be for you? Me? Yeah. Uh, John Lennon Imagine. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Good one. Well, I mean, it was just the timing. I think it was just the time, you know. Uh, but I listened to other records before that, but that was the first actual vinyl record that I owned. My dad bought it for me. But, um, do you still I own know. it? I do not. No, no. I can't. It's, it's too much stuff. I, I'm <laughs> not into. I, it's, I'm, I'm very big on iTunes. I'm happy with iTunes. Right. I don't like having stuff because, needless to say, I can accumulate some stuff. Right. <laughs> and I, it's just, you know, ah, I'm, I'm, ah. I'm like you. I love iTunes. I love my digital, but. You know, somewhere right, right. You can see part. You can see part of it right here. I've got about a thousand vinyl albums. I can't get rid of them because there's just too many memories in them. There's too much history. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, as an artist, do you not find there's a, there's a certain loss of fidelity by listening to just iTunes compared to vinyl or even a CD? I have no idea. I don't listen. I, I can't tell the difference between any of it. It's all it's all the same shit to me, Mom. <laughs> it's music. I think I she can't. she speaks I what the average person on the street would say the same thing. It's just... unless you a beat it for me. If you a right. it and then beat it, I might be able to tell the difference. Other than that, I could give a a rat's ass. Yeah, yeah, but but at the end of the day, when you're walking on the street, all you've got is your iPhone and the white earbuds. You're not going to have a turntable with you walking down the street, so it really doesn't matter. Not yeah. to me. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Now, uh, you know, going back historically, we're talking about Kiss being an old band and stuff. You're now working with Jakey e. Lee. Oh yeah, no, it's not because it's an old man. It's no, just, I, a, I didn't love intro. even in 1975. I didn't love right. kids. I was a chick, I think. Um, Jake Lee, Jake, yeah, I, you know that was an extraordinary experience. How that happened? I think I might have told you already, though, Mitch. Right? Didn't I tell you how that happened? Probably. Yes. Probably. But, but, but you, did, you didn't. You didn't tell me. So yeah, how did well, you? I just don't want to bore him. <laughs> It's just, it, what happened was Son, my band Son, was right. playing in, in Phoenix, and we had a drive from L.A. to Phoenix, and we were playing the game in the car where each person gets to play a song, and it would right. go like one, two, three, four, one, two, like, you know, like that, and Tommy Stewart, our drummer, started playing Badlands, and the guys were all freaking out, freaking out, and I'm like, I've never heard of this band. Was that because Eric Singer of Kiss was in Badlands that people were freaking out? 
I just no. met him. Oh, the other come day. on, Mitch. Stop the <laughs> dropping here. <laughs> I just met him. That's so weird yeah. you can say that. I just met Eric at Thanksgiving. But anyway, uh, yeah. So, and I'm like, well, I never, I don't, who is? And then they start going on and on and on about Jakey Lee, Jakey Lee, Jakey Lee, whom I have heard the name right. somewhere, but not really. If he ever sees this, he's going to shoot me. So I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Anyways, blah, blah, blah. It, they're going on and on and on and on about it. Then we're on from Phoenix. Our next show is in Vegas. So all the way from Phoenix to Vegas, it's Badlands, Jakey Lee, Badlands, Jakey Lee. Right. And Tishy goes, I think Jake lives in Vegas. And the other go, yeah, yeah, I think, but he's been having, you know, he had a, he, he was out of the, the whole scene for a while. He was, dropped out. He dropped out of the scene. And then just Tishy goes, wouldn't it be amazing if he showed up at our show? Wouldn't that be amazing? And, I, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, it'd be great, great, cool, who, cool. yeah, whatevs. Anyways, I go out for, we get to Vegas, we do a sound check. I go out for dinner with my friends, Brent Fitz, who's a drummer with Slack. Yeah. Actually, sorry about dropping the names on your toes. However, uh, formerly with Bruce Kulik of Kiss. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Somehow, everything in Mitch's world can come back to Kiss. It's the six degrees of separation yeah. of Kiss. Mitch doesn't come back to Kiss. I don't know what to say. But you know my Kiss stories too. Well, yes. it's not. It's Gene Simmons. But anyways, we're out to dinner. I say to it's, my God, these guys have been going on and on about this guy, Jakey Lee, he's a guitar And Brent looks at me and he goes, he's in the other room. <laughs> what? <laughs> Take me to him. Oh, my God. So he takes me in and I meet Jake, who is not somebody that I'm really familiar with, whereas these guys are going to lose their minds. So I get a picture of me and Jake, and he's like, I know you. I'm like, you do? Oh, my goodness. Anyways, get back to the – and I said, if you don't show up at this gig tonight, you're dead. You are dead. So anyway, he t I get back to the gig. I have I have a photograph of me and Jake on my iPhone, and I show it to Tushy. I go, I was out for dinner, and some guy want to take a picture with me. I have no idea who he is. You, I, I, he said you might know him. Do you know who this is? <laughs> Tishy loses his shit. It was the best. It was the best. I mean, what are the chances of that happening? How could that happen? And it right. did. And not only that, Jake was kind enough to show up that night to our show and he stayed the entire like he stayed there and then he hung out with the guys afterwards and took pictures with them and everything. Anyway, that's how it started. And then he said, you know, I want you to sing on my record and blah blah blah. And that's yeah. So so so, so yeah. So what what are you doing with him? Did you just sing one song on his record or co wrote a song and sang it on his record, yeah. On his record, which is still in the process of being made. Yeah. 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 But now you've mentioned Sun and Tishy. Let's talk a little bit about your new band. Uh, you, Sun, something onto nothing. Nothing, <laughs> something onto nothing. Now the you know, so for people who may not know Brian uh, very well, he's drummed with White Snake. He's drummed with uh, Foreigner. He's Billy. Billy Idol for a long time. How did you two get together? Um, Ozzy, right, Ozzy Zach or... Wild. Mm -hmm. How did Tishy and I get together? We he played on one of my records, which was it's called Rats in 1993, right. and and then he toured with me for a bit, but then he went off because he was with, he was doing a band he was in a band with Zach Wild called Pride and Glory, and then um, and we lost touch, of course, right. and I think it was 2010. On MySpace, somehow we found each other. I, I can't remember all the details. And they bore you to tears anyway. So uh, we got back in touch. We, he said, why don't we try writing some songs together? Yeah, sure. We did that. And I was actually writing songs for me. And after, as soon as we got together, it was like a fountain of creativity. And after about... The first four songs, we looked at each other and we said, you know, we should really just 
we, this should be a band. That's it. And that's how it started. And then it just went from there. And it's been nothing but an amazing, amazing experience. For some reason, Brian and I just musically are, we're made for each other. It, it, if we're in a room, we start writing songs. Even if, like, I'm just trying to make a cup of tea over here. I do not need to be writing a song right now. He's like, what about this? What about this? <laughs> just, it's ridiculous. But it's fun, fantastic. And it's an amazing, amazing amount of fun. And apparently that seems to translate to the, record, to the recordings because I'm getting all these comments back from people saying, this is the, this is, this is the best rock record of 2012. This is like real rock. This is, it feels like you guys are having fun, which we are. You know what I mean? Like it's actually translating to the sound. It's pretty cool. So, so you uh, you recorded and released an album. Indeed, yes. we did. And what's the title? The title is, I think, I don't even know. I think it's called something. It's something unto nothing, son. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, right now it's available on iTunes, and the hard copies are coming out in January, I believe. January so the, the physical f- CDs. Yeah, January yeah. the fifteenth. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people are into that. Absolutely. Let me ask you, is it, is it different now from 1993 when you worked with Brian Laz, getting a record put together? I mean, are there different pressures? Is it, are, I mean, you're doing this mostly on your own, right? Completely. On, well, right. I mean, we have uh, uh, Robo Records is the record, com- the record company that it released it and, and their distribution, etc. It's completely different because we have no money whatsoever right. except for that which comes out of our own pockets. And... Uh, it's, it's like, it's, in a way, it's like being kids again. Like you have nothing, no one's giving you anything. Nobody cares. Um, but with that nothing come, pardon me? uh, Was with the nothing that people are giving you though, does, does more, does it come with more freedom though? I mean, you know, when you're working for, a big record company or a major they're telling you we need a hit single your lyrics need to reflect this your look has to be this now you're completely free well i you know i can honestly say that i never experienced that okay even back in those days i guess either i was just lucky or i i don't know i was always left more or less alone to do what i wanted to do but uh the difference was they had piles of money, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and now they, we don't. So, but it's extremely exciting. And when you're called to this uh, to this profession, I suppose right. I, it's just like being, you know, in a sense, it's like being called to any profession. Yeah. It, it, it the joy is in the creation. And it's extremely gratifying and fulfilling when people respond in a, in a positive manner. I mean, it's the most amazing thing in the entire world. And if you actually make some money doing it, it's even more amazing. But you have to do it because that's why you're here. You know, it sounds so ridiculous, but it's the truth. Just well, I, I have to do that. And I, Tishy's very much the same way. I mean, we would love to make money doing it for sure because it's so much fun. How do you- how do you measure success in this day and age? Back then, it was top 10 singles. Now, how do you measure? Because it's more difficult to get a top 10 single, if, if that even exists, really. It's, it's success, I it's, don't it's, know. Is success for you more of an art, artistic gratification that you just love what you're doing? Does, is that more I'm important not, now? No. That's definitely a big, huge part of it, for sure. But it wouldn't be yeah. any fun if nobody liked it. Or nobody responded, right. or nobody cared. Uh, that would be no fun. I mean, you know, you're doing it because you want to express, and if you're expressing, you want somebody to hear. You know, right. it, artists are the most insecure human beings on the planet. Well, maybe not the most, <laughs> but right up there. Right up there. So, I mean, so you know, on 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 the topic of getting people, you you want people to hear what you're doing. You've been touring for this. How much well, touring? Not really touring. Not touring, but you've been playing live. We've been, we've done about eight shows altogether. We did, or maybe seven, whatever. That's not a lot, you know what I mean? But it was it was 
it was indescribably exciting how quickly we got better right. because we're all vets, you know, veterans of this, you know, we've been all of us together. I mean, you know, what, how, 300 years of experience together? <laughs> <laughs> But, but how do you get a new project off the ground in this day and age? I mean, you don't have the big machine behind you. No, you do not. And how do you get it off the... I would love somebody out there to tell me because right. I have no idea. We're just doing the best we can do. That's all we can do. You know, right. there's Twitter, Facebook, there's the Internet, there's people like you who want to talk. Um, and that's basically it. You know, the radio... We we've gone up the charts a little. <laughs> we went from fifty nine to fifty five on the classic rock charts. Yes. yes. What Which are the classic cool. rock charts? But, and you know, one of the other jobs you had in the past was to be a Canadian Idol judge, which was sort of catapulting people to success as well. Uh, is there any card? I mean, do you? No, it didn't really propel anybody. I don't. Well, it, it hmm. It, it propel. It, what it does. Those kind of television shows what they do is they uh make you temporarily famous for you know 15 minutes uh some people can t it's just like anything of course it's not going to be everybody who does it S one in one out of a thousand is the one that manages to keep keep that going like carly ray jepson came from canadian idol right and she's a huge That's right fine. now I mean, she's the flavor of the moment, you know. Um, and but it took her almost six or seven years after Canadian Idol to, to achieve the no. success. I mean, it's been a while. I don't remember what year she was on, but what but year? But the show has been canceled about at least four years now it's been canceled. So, yes. it's, been a, so it's been a, a four or five year minimum that it took yeah. her to get to the top. And I don't think she was in the last season either. No. But yeah. But the the point is, she was going to do it regardless. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't Canadian Idol that really gave her, I don't think it made much difference one way or the other. Well, maybe it did because it allowed her to meet people. Right. Because it's really who you know in the end. <laughs> it really is. Maybe it just fast-tracked things for her. Perhaps. You know, perhaps. I don't, who knows? You know, I think it's destiny. I think some people are destined and others aren't. You know, but... But the thing is, is those shows are really about being a television show. It's about being entertaining and right. fun. And it was a brilliant television show, Canadian Idol. It was yes. really good and very funny and very um, galvanizing. It galvanizes communities and, you know, provinces or states or what have you. You know, people get behind their person and it's just fun. It's not really about music. Yeah, and it was very different to the American Idol, Mike, because American Idol is sort of looking for the teen pop star. Canadian Idol was looking for any kind of star, country music, rock music. There was all kinds of different people, which yeah. American Idol doesn't really do or no. still doesn't do. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, we, we have to I study know. these things. I know. Well, so, so let, me, let me ask you, what are your future plans for Sun? Where, what do you hope to be doing with it in 2013? touring we want to be out there live because i think because we know because we have an enormous impact live i mean that's you know and then we get the instant gratification of knowing that that people are responding and enjoying what we're doing you know it for musicians like myself like tishy like tommy and devon we're all live is it it just the whole thing coalesces and it all makes sense when you're right. live, you know, it's, it's the greatest high in the world. So that's really what we want to do. We want to find a band that wants to take, take us on tour with them that, you know, it's very difficult because we're not a known entity per se. You know, right. I mean, each of us individually have some, some notoriety, you know, together, hopefully we have more, but it's an enormously challenging thing. And, you know, it's incredibly expensive to tour. You don't just, <laughs> oh, hi. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you got to pay people. People need to get paid. And you got to get paid to pay people. So right. it's, you know, and when nobody's ever heard of you, who's going to buy a ticket? So we need a band that's willing to take us on, regardless of the fact that we're not necessarily going to be bringing in thousands of people a night, you know? Do you have do you, do you have any shows booked yet for 2013? 
there, look, there's there's stuff going on around Nam right now, but we're it's all it's still in the planning stages, and we're a bit late in the game for that. So we'll see what happens. Okay. I, I don't. I, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but there's some announcements that Tishy has up his sleeve. <laughs> we're going to get to. Is it more difficult? Uh, for a rock band to have a female singer, or does that have no part in it at all? I don't really know because I don't really know. I, I, I there aren't how many. I don't really know many rock it's bands it. that do have female singers and per se. But maybe there are, and I just don't know them. You know what I mean? Like, so it's hard to say. I don't ever as a, as a as a singer, as a musician, as an artist. I never think of myself as a gender which okay. sounds really and, and you shouldn't quite frankly but you shouldn't well, but it just there seems to be this they do they, it seems as though you know f girls or females are pop stars and the men are the dirty rock and rollers and it, it, you know Joan Jad and Lita Ford they really struggled to get to the success that they got to compared to any other band I mean Steven Tyler and whatever it, it seems more difficult yeah, well, Steven Tyler is, you know, I, he's just, I wouldn't say, I mean, I love Lita and I love Joan, but I they're not really in the same category, category. to me in the sense that, you know, Steven is such a, a brilliant front man and performer and, like, he's amazing. I mean, so are they, but it's different. I don't, yeah, it's just different. It's a different thing. Uh uh it's it's intriguing because you're absolutely right and there are very 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 few females in this genre right. that have ever really broken through with the exception of Janis Joplin and who who Ann Wilson um, perhaps Hart yeah you know, yeah uh-huh and that's about it and so there was no one for me no females for me to really uh, model myself after the people that I wanted to be were were Paul Rogers, Steve Perry, Robin Zander, Steven Tyler. Those were the people I wanted to be. That's what I wanted to do. Then Peter Frampton said, "No, you're Steve Marriott." <laughs> yeah, man, <that'd> be great. <laughs> and of course. Uh, of course, this summer I got to watch you sing all the foreigner songs at a, at a foreigner show. So you must have been a big fan of Lou, also. Huge fan! Oh my goodness, I can't believe I didn't even say his name. My God, I love Lou Graham. Love, love. Yes. But yeah, so yeah, and those were all the kinds. That's the stuff that I, I sing the best, in my opinion. I can right, sing right. a lot of stuff, but that's what I sing the best. And apparently, according to all the comments I'm getting. That's what other people think too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and an amazing thing is, is that women do respond very positive. Not all, you know, but there's enough women who respond really positively to having a female that they can sort of identify with, in a sense. Because I'm not. Uh, I don't think I am someone who is um, unapproachable. I think I'm somebody right, that's right. F fairly approachable, so uh, other other gals enjoy that, you know? Yeah, and if yeah. I can just ask you one question that's sort of off topic, the, the, the Canadian military honored you this year. Uh, c can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, they asked me, my squadron, 417 Combat Support Squadron, which is in right. Cold Lake, Alberta, actually, they, they approached me and asked me if I would consider being their honorary colonel, which to me was, you know, I, I, I had no idea what that was. So I said, yes. <laughs> and then I said, what is that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nutter. Anyway, and uh, I found out in short order. And it's an enormous honor to be associated with people like this who are out there you know, sacrificing so much for our sake. And um, we're actually working on a television show that's yeah. going to that's gonna focus on these people and their lives and what they actually do. Because I think it's time for us as 
civilians to understand what our military does. I had no idea. You know, to me it was just, oh, war. I'm not into it. But that's not really what our military is about. Our military is more about peace, you know. So and I think in a sense, if we change our perspective slightly, we could look at all of it being that way. And, you know, eventually I hope that it ends up being that way for all of us. In the meantime, it's a huge honor and I am having a blast with them. They're incredible. I got to fly a helicopter. I got to do like target practice you know range shooting shooting a pistol i got pulled into a helicopter that was hovering at 50 feet from the ground wow up. it was a little intense and it's all on film so you get to see it it's pretty wild the, the, the tv show is it just one sort of self-contained show or, or a series don't know yet because they're okay. in the process of trying to get it sold but it I, okay Looking probably at episode episodes. It's going to be like a a, a series. A series. Okay. Ah, that sounds great, Mike. Mitch. What up? What? What up? I said, what up? I said, what? What's your question, Mike? Uh, you know, I I I was just more interested in in Sun and what she's doing with that because I'll be honest, I haven't heard it, but I now have to go out and check this out, and I want I want to be able to go see it, see them live somewhere. <laughs> Do you like rock? Do you like oh, heavy of rock? Music? I love. Yeah. Oh, I love all music, but I'm a I'm a I'm a hard rock person. Yeah. Mitch, I think he will like it. Yeah, he will. It really is. The first song Nomad that was sent to me is great. Um, you know, it, it's really you worth know what checking. You do? Yeah, just go on iTunes, something unto nothing, and just preview it. Listen to bits of all of the songs, and that's you'll see if you know. That's, that, that's what I'm going to do. Either that or Reverb Nation. I think you can also pre preview it on that too. Yeah. Are you and on, it, Are you on Spotify? I don't know. I have no. I don't know. There's too much <laughs> shit. There's too much I stuff. Don't know. <laughs> well, let me look right now as we're talking. Something. If we're not, can you put us on the... there? <laughs> Yeah, show us on Spotify. Albums, no. something on. The, yes, you are. I can. I can. What is uh, it? Uh, the whole album, something under nothing, is on Spotify. All well, who knew? Thirteen songs. Yeah, babe. There yes, you go. So now I can listen to them all. Yeehaw! Yeah, you, you, you'll really enjoy it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I want to compare it to anything really because it, it's its own beast. But it, it's sort of you—you you take all of your classic '70s rock and and throwing in some loud guitars. That's basically what you're doing. No, I'm yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to this. So somebody actually oh. described it. Somebody's description of it, which I thought was kind of pretty much dead on in a lot of ways, was they said if it, it's the love child of Led Zeppelin and Janis Joplin. Even though I don't really find myself Janis Joplin, -y, but you know, if somebody wants to say that, that's fine. I like the fact that it's intense energy. I'd like to. It, I'd like it if it was the love child of Led Zeppelin and Paul Rogers. But then I suppose that would be a gay relationship, there <laughs> <laughs> which I personally have no problem with. <laughs> but physically, yeah. that can't happen. Well, what else? <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's really worth checking out. And, and, and you know, for people who want the physical CD, it's coming out it's very, very well, soon. So, so where can people find you and the band on the Internet so they can get more information and they could order we, the physical CD? Yeah. Well, the, I don't know how that's going to happen. When the physical CD comes out January the 15th, I don't know how where it's going to be or how we're going to do that. But it, I know it is coming out. That's a question for my record company, which I will ask. Well, I wish I knew thought of that before. Um, yeah. But online, they, something unto nothing dot com, something unto nothing on iTunes and on Amazon and on Facebook. Correct. And, and you, where do we find you online? You will find me online on Twitter at Sass Jordan strangely enough <laughs> uh and on facebook sas jordan strangely enough <laughs> and i have a 
website, www.sassjordan.com, but, th- but that website really needs to be updated. So, uh, yeah. But I'm always on Twitter, and I'm always on Facebook. So Absolutely. Is yeah. there more Sass Jordan solo material coming on, or are you really on to Sun, and that's, that's sort of what you're locked into for the next three, four years? Well, I'm not locked into anything because I would choke to death. I right. hate that idea with my Sagittarian ascendant. <laughs> However, I'm definitely more focused on Sun at this time. Okay. But of course, I will do. Uh, I'm sure I'll be doing stuff on my own. I mean, like you know, nothing lasts forever except for Sun. <laughs> yeah, we certainly hope it does. <laughs> yeah, I, but you know, let's get real. Anyways, but I'm focused on that right now. That's really, really my baby, and that's what's um, exciting and fun and inspiring for me right now. Yeah. Very cool. Mitch, any other questions? No. N- actually, no. Uh, sorry. I got a little technical thing. My video feed shut off, so I apologize. Uh, well, we but can no. still see you. Okay, but I'm yeah, anyway. Yeah, still beautiful. I, I won't. Uh, I'll just smile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Mitchie. Where did the? Uh, I don't know why you all disappear. Anyway, forget that. But but thank you for joining us today. Yeah, this was great. This was great. I mean, I I found a new band, and I love finding new bands. Yeah, and oh you really God, there's enjoy this. So many out there. There's so I know. Many. Well, there there are there are, and you know, and that's kind of oh. kind of what Mitch and I are doing this podcast all about is just talking about love of music and what we're listening to and you know whether it's a new release or as we've said before it's something that you've just discovered that's 50 years old it doesn't matter you know there's so much great music to discover there really is and it's such a powerful powerful thing music is the soundtrack of our lives and i mean that sounds trite but Good God, try spending 10 minutes without it. Like, unless you're alone at home with nothing on, you know, like no music on, you can't get away from it. It's, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere, yep. you yep. know? And it's, I think it's um, very, strangely enough, I know this is a weird thing to say, I think that music and the people who create it are not <laughs> recognized in a lot of ways in this day and age. It's like... It, 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 oh, you know, I don't need to pay for that. You know, what the hell? It doesn't matter. It's free. Everybody can have it for free. But wouldn't it be nice to support that somehow? Like, look, in our schools, we the, the arts programs in our schools have gone, you know, out the window, basically, especially now. You know, yeah, so it's it, it, funding. It, it feels like, you know, music is disposable to some people. Yeah. Yes, it does. And I understand why people, you know, there's so many people that do not even notice the music when it's playing. I right. can't even imagine that. How do you do that? But, you know, of course, my ears tune to it. So, but wouldn't it be weird to see a film with no music? Oh, or film or a TV show or anything. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's. It's it's got to be there. It's ubiquitous. Anyways, it's just, I there's just so much fantastic stuff out there. I, it's overwhelming, and it's very difficult to pick a path through it and not you know leave out a ton of great stuff. And you're going to. It's impossible not to. So so you know we're the the three of us are just doing the best we can, and I'm sure that anybody listening in is doing the same thing. But it music has not gotten worse. It's just gotten more. That's all. Oh, There's I, I, I think it's got. It has gotten better, and there is more of it. That's it. Yeah. You know, so, you just you just have to look for it. You know, there is yeah. so much of it out there, and exactly. you know, it used to be you let the record labels bring the music to you through Rolling Stone and radio and MTV. That doesn't happen. So now you've got to kind of do the work to go find that band on Facebook and click the link and buy the music right from them. Absolutely, and then spread the word about them because you want, now more than ever, bands need, they desperately need the, you know, the sponsorship of their fans, the people that love them to to spread the word. It's all about word of mouth. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, Mitch, I I think think we uh, we should wrap this up. We've been talking for almost 45 minutes here. 
and we are gas bags. Ah, but it's music. Yeah. We love talking about music. But all music. as as always, we want to hear feedback from our listeners. Let us know what you think of this episode. Let us know if you went out and checked out Sun and what you think. Um, or you have to. You have to. You have to. Go you to have our... to check it out. No, it really <laughs> is good. Go, go, you know, leave comments on our Facebook page, Dropping the Needle. You can find us very easily there or f- comments on Twitter, wherever. We just want to know. We want to hear what you guys think and, you know, what music you're <laughs> listening to. What, what, what music you're listening to, what you've discovered, you know, this is how we find interesting music. So please leave us comments. As always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandvold. I'm joined by Mitch LaFon, and today we've got a very special guest, Sass Jordan, who sat in with us. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Dropping the Needle. Dropping the Needle. With Michael Branvold and Mitch LaFon.